Um, we are, uh, what I want to do is, is not have any sort of set program, but I'd just like all of you to kind of go out and meet each other, meet new people. You can talk about Krista or you can talk about yourselves, but please just listen to each other. Um, one of the things that, I, having spent almost 30 years with Krista, is that um, she really listened to people. Um, you know, I listen to her every day warming up, and so that's something I'm going to miss. Um, and then I also miss her counsel, and so I, what I find is that people, the kind of counsel that um, you guys were getting from Krista in your everyday lives are things that I got and my children got every day, um, and those are the things that are going to live on. Um, but she was not a superficial woman. Um, she did not brag about herself even though I wanted to break for her. I mean, if she had known what I was doing now as far as putting this together for her or even putting a small, tiny picture of her on a Facebook post, uh, I would hear it <laughs> because it was not, she did not like to draw attention to herself, but you know, I, damn it, I'm gonna give her attention. <laughs> but, um, just... but we're gonna start with, um, um, Krista already had a naturally beautiful voice. Uh, over the last 20 years, she had weekly sessions with her vocal coach, Harriet McCleary, who just recently retired from uh, St. Olaf College, uh, where she was a long-time uh, vocal coach. Maybe not that long. Give <laughs> ages away, but... Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, she has, I, I, right now I can't imagine any other soprano that I'd rather hear than the one who taught my wife. And then we're just gonna go from there. So thank you very much for being here.
do something a little bit more um, well we're playing rock and roll methods to 
choral music. Uh, so, Krista and I met first in 1989. We were both in choir together, and I was sitting on one, the way we were at Luther College, we were in cathedral choir, and we had sopranos and altos sitting this way, basses and tenors this way. And I just kind of remember in 1989 looking across from my section in the baritone slash tenor area, uh, seeing all of these, and no offense if anyone's this way, but made up women uh, with the big hair and uh, a lot to make up. And then I kept looking, and then I saw, and you'll see a lot of the pictures that, of Krista out there, this really hot Edie Brickell looking chick. And, <laughs> um, and I just thought, well, I want to get to know her. And well, two years later, we ended up getting together. But <laughs> um, the thing is, is that we, you know, we love music. She played uh, bassoon, and she played, um, well, she sang, of course. She did some oboe, yeah. Uh, and, um, but she loved the Monkey, she loved the Beatles, uh, she used to bootleg a bunch of albums at Golden Records in Northfield where she grew up, and, um, and we could pretty much sing everything of the Beatles, uh, that they ever released, um, you know, a cappella. there was one time we were driving from Northfield to Decorah, uh, the tape cassette in her car, car didn't work, so we just said, well, let's just sing the Beatles' White Album, and so we started from... <laughs> So we started from uh, back in the USSR, and we just kind of got through side A and side B, and we kind of fudged our way through Revolution 9, but, you know, it's, you know, it's music concrete, so it's all right. And, uh, the, uh, and she also really loved the band Rush, and I was, of course, being a bass player and a singer, I was a big Getty Lee fan, so we, we had that in common. Uh, and then we, um, you know, some, some people, they've got Oh, they're playing our song. Well, we had one, oh, they're playing our album. And that was Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy. Um, <laughs> um, and, you know, even though we were properly trained singers, we probably shouldn't like Robert Plant, but we like a lot of Robert Plant. You know? <laughs> um, this shirt, actually, I bought in 1989. Uh, and it's... Uh, one that actually has been in my drawer since 1989, and Krista, whenever I was gone on a gig or someplace out of the house, is what she would wear at night. Um, and so that's why, well, it's a cool shirt, but it's, you know, it's... Um, but we also, especially when our kids were born, in the early 2000s, we were both in the corral, uh, and we were working quite a bit on these Beethoven's Night. We could pretty much just, again, like with the Beatles White Album, we could take the entire choral ending by memory. I think most of us that have sung it a number of times can just just pick up and sing it. But we'd get to the parts like the development section of the orchestra, and we'd sing those parts too, and then we'd come back in and, you know, just because you have to fill in the, the, the sound. And, um, but that's, what well, we were both raised Lutheran, so it's kind of, you know, you, you, you can't, God forbid you sing the same melody that somebody else is singing, you know, if you have to, you know, you got a soprano here, well, I got to take the alto, and it's, you know, that's the way we were, and, um, so, um, well, where was I going with this? Well, anyway, I, I like, I like the really raw sound, I mean, I joke, because I come from, both my parents are music educators, her mom's a music educator, and her dad comes from a natural music family, and, um, I used to joke with my dad, he seemed like Mendelssohn and I was really more Berlioz. And uh, um, that's if you really know your music history. <laughs> <laughs> a few years ago I taught at McNally Smith and I was teaching music history when we were doing that. And I was teaching the uh, Symphony Fantastique, had all the lights off. Um, and because it was pitch black, because I think when you listen to music, you listen to music, right? Um, well, after a while I got people were pounding on the door trying to get into my classroom and apparently I was playing uh, Symphony Fantastic too loud that I was disrupting the rock band practicing <laughs> so it's with this attitude um, that we're going to be doing these next few pieces um, if it falls apart it's gonna fall apart this has not been rehearsed it's just you know these are some recent things um, this year I just by happenstance, Kathy Romy asked if I, if I could come in and fill in and, and if I wanted to sing uh, for their ACDA conference, uh, Carmina Burana. I said, sure. Um, and I realized that I had only sung the old Fortuna part. I hadn't sung anything else. So, 
so then I realized, well, I, I guess I'd better study because I uh, <laughs> don't want to let her down. And so I, 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 I relished that chance to actually re-engage with the corral. And then right after that, she said, she said hey, I love your participation there. Will you sing Dream of Grantius with us? And I said, uh, right, yeah, sure. So one of the things that Chris and I love to do is we, we camp. We'd always get a camper cabin in one of the Minnesota State Parks. We did it about four times a year. So in March, right after we got the scores, we were one night sitting in the cabin and we were just kind of going through, marking our scores and uh, practicing Dream of Garantias. Uh, over at, Af no, it's in Wild River State Park. That's where we were that time. And um, uh, where was I going with this? Anyway. Um, no, it's, it's really fun to, just to come in and, and sing and just sing for the hell of it, you know, and not have to worry about sounding perfect and being stressed out when you're on stage or you're doing Mahler's second and you're up on stage for like 60 minutes before you have to come in and sing I'll for Stan. Um, so I'm not sure how you guys are going to handle that part, but I'm, it's, um, that's really tough. Um, so... As I said earlier, I had a hard time imagining imagining any other soprano singing other than Harriet, and I'm just grateful that she did sing. Another voice that my wife really adored, and a person that she really adored, was my colleague at Augsburg, and that's Susan Druck. Um, and she actually, she when, when I was re-auditioning for my chorale audition, Krista said to me, you need to call up Susan because you're kind of a baritone and she's mezzo and she had that light voice thing and she will get you that, that relax and, and, and it was just great. So I'm just grateful that I asked her if she'd be part of this rock and roll experiment. Um, it's not really rock and roll, but that's the vibe that I want us to, to go forth in this. So I'm gonna stop talking now. Um, after after they're going through, you guys are gonna try to do Carmina and Beethoven. Yeah. That's Beethoven to everybody else. Um, we're gonna try that, and then after that, I would just encourage you all, I love it when people just open up and sing. Um, I sometimes get people say, oh, I can't compete with that. So well, that's not about competition. You know, music's not competition. You know, we're not fighting against each other. We're actually working with each other. And Krista was always driven to excel. She didn't have in her mind that she was doing something for some social mileage or for, or for doing. She just wanted to say, this is the job I've been asked to do, and I want to do the best job I can at it. Because uh, she didn't want to let anybody else down, and she didn't want to let herself down. And she just, she was just brilliant. And that's that's how we want to raise our kids, is that they're not going to be competing against anybody. They are going to be working with people to excel. And all of our diverse talents. I mean, Krista really wanted to, do, after college, join the Peace Corps and then pursue her advanced degrees in anthropology. Um, so she was, her undergrad was history and anthropology uh, with a classical civilizations minor. And but she loved singing and she loved dancing. So I'm rambling now. Um, and I've been told by my wife that I can talk and talk and I can talk to a brick wall and get that brick wall to talk back. <laughs> and it usually tells me to shut up. So it's <laughs> so in the days and weeks and years to come, I think I, I, I started posting things about my wife that I cherish and stories about her love of football. Um, she loved tackling and special teams. Um, but she had some of this attitude that was a quiet but disciplined and just, she just wanted people to assume positive intent always. That we're not out to be enemies, we're out there to lift each other up. And that's, that's the spirit that we're doing here. So I'm going to stop and my, my, I'm going to stop. So thanks.